If you feel like your website should be receiving a higher amount of free organic traffic, you might be right. In my 12 plus years working in online marketing, I've seen some amazing websites make some silly mistakes that prevented them from showing up in Google search. Not to say that I've ever made any of these mistakes. My name is Scott Redgate and I'm an online marketing coach and the purpose of this channel is to help you make more and spend less in your online marketing efforts. You don't need to be an expert or have an advanced degree to see success marketing your business on the internet. And here's the thing, you don't have to hire an agency to do it for you. This is part two of a six part series that I'm doing on simple SEO strategies that drive results. In this week's video, we're gonna be discussing three simple ways to optimize your images that anyone can do. I'm serious, if you've ever uploaded an image to Facebook or emailed a photo to someone, you'll be able to do the steps that we're about to review. Before we get into today's SEO strategy to drive more organic traffic to your website, make sure to grab my free seven day online marketing jumpstart doc at scottredgate.com jumpstart. I'll leave a link in the description below for you to get your copy. This doc is a great complement to what we'll be covering in this six part series. And honestly, when I previously worked at a digital marketing agency, we charged thousands of dollars for the steps that I outline in this doc. It's a bullet point list, it's super simple, and did I mention, it's free. All right, let's go. Did you know that whenever someone is browsing your website, there's a back and forth going on behind the scenes between their device and your website's hosting provider? For example, if they click a link to one of your pages, your hosting provider is making available all of the page's assets of that page, like text and images, and that user's device is essentially downloading all of that information. Here's the thing, if your page is super heavy, meaning it has a ton of assets with high file sizes, this can cause your page to load super slow. Walmart found that for every one second improvement in page load time, conversions increased by 2%. That's a big deal. So let me ask you this, are there any websites that you frequent that are notoriously slow? Let me know in the comments below what that website is. One of the heaviest things on your website is your images. So the first tip that I have for you is with a few clicks, you can use an image compressor tool that takes your images and lowers its file size, but the quality of the image is still super high. One of my favorite tools is Tiny PNG. Let me show you how to use it. All right, so here's how easy it is to use Tiny PNG. So I went to tinypng.com and then inside this section where it says drop your WebP, PNG, or JPEG image files, I'm simply gonna click it and then I'm going to upload a picture from my computer. And so it takes a few seconds. And so this image is called bike-in-garage. And you can see that it has taken the image from 3.5 megabytes and it has compressed it to 899 kilobytes, which is a 74% savings. So as you can imagine, if you have an image heavy website and you have a lot of images where this type of compression or this type of file size savings can happen, your page will be able to load a lot quicker. And the best news is once you start putting your images into this tool and then comparing what they did look like to what it looks like after you compress them with tiny PNG, it is almost the same exact quality. It is extremely difficult to be able to identify which one is compressed and which one isn't compressed, but you'll still get that file size savings if you upload the new version to your website. This leads me to point number two, which is optimizing your image's file name. Optimizing the file name of your images helps with SEO as it allows search engines to better understand what the image is about. This was important a decade ago when image recognition abilities like Google Lens didn't exist. Even though it does now, having a clean image name can be helpful. You can use these best practices for any new images that you're uploading, but I wouldn't recommend changing your image file names for existing images if you're getting a lot of referral traffic from Google Images. Here's what you'll wanna do. First, the file name should be descriptive of the image content. This will help search engines understand what the image is about and index it more accurately. For example, if you have an image of a basketball, the file name could be basketball-on-ground.jpg. Next, the file name should be short and simple so that it's easy for search engines to read and understand. A good rule of thumb is to keep the file name to five or six words or less. 
Last but not least, use hyphens to separate the words. If you're using a name that contains a space in the file name, the space will be encoded as a plus sign or as a percent encoded string, and it can be disorganized. So those are some best practices for how you can name your image. But my third tip to optimize your images is to use proper image alt tags. Image alt tags are a text description of an image that is displayed when an image cannot be loaded. They're also used by search engines to understand what the image is all about. Alt tags are important for accessibility, SEO, and user experience. As I said, the first reason is accessibility. Alt tags help people who are visually impaired understand the content of your website. They can use screen readers to read the alt text, which can describe the image to them. This helps those users and search engines better understand what the picture is. The next reason why alt tags are important is for user experience. For example, if the image is slow and can't be loaded, the alt text might be displayed instead. Here are some tips for writing image alt text with SEO in mind. First, it's not rocket science, but describe what the image is about. That is the true purpose of why alt tags exist. Second, use keywords in the alt text if it makes sense. This will help your image rank for some of those keywords in the search results. However, it's important to use keywords only if they're relevant to the image and make sure not to stuff the image alt tag with keywords. That may have worked in 2010, but it doesn't work now. Third, keep the alt text short and concise. A good rule of thumb is to keep the alt text to 125 characters or less. Lastly, use proper capitalization and punctuation. The alt text might read something like a photo of a basketball on the ground using the previous example that we were talking about. So in summary, images are important to make your page stand out more, and a few easy ways to optimize them include compressing your image file size, making sure the file name is organized, and writing descriptive alt text. I hope that was helpful, and I'd be honored if you subscribe to my channel, especially if you wanna see the rest of this simple SEO strategy series. Until next time.